They say the only things in life that are guaranteed are death and taxes. I think they should add messy child support hearings to that as well. They never go smoothly. In the matter of the marriage of Thayer, 19 DM 197, announce appearances. Jennifer Harper appears on behalf of DCF. All right, you are Clayton Thayer? Yes. Mr. Thayer, I can't tell. Do you have a hat? Is that a hat or a? No, sorry, it's a headband. All right, yeah, we're, I understand. Sorry. I that's apologize. Okay. That's fine. Um, it's, it happens frequently, and uh, yeah. but this is actually a court of law, so we do have some, we still have to follow some dress codes. So anyway. Yeah, I, I apologize. Your apologies accepted. All right, we are uh, uh, on for a contempt citation. The court reviewed the order filed back, um, I think, on March 8th, um, which was the original contempt order where the defendant agreed he was in contempt and certain promises were made to purge himself. So where are we at, Ms. Harper? Well, Your Honor, since that time, we've continued to work with Mr. Thayer, including, as you see, there's a motion for modification in there. Correct. However, payments have still not been coming in. The last payment that was made was on April 2nd of this year. Okay. So at this point, we are requesting that an attorney be appointed for him. Okay. Ms. Sherry, let's talk about that request. you know what that means? Yes. Well, I what think so. Tell me what you think it means. I just Are they going to represent me, I, I'm guessing, or I don't know. I guess I don't know what it means. All right. Here's what she's... The reason um, Ms. Harper is asking that you be a appointed counsel is she's going to ask that you be placed in jail. Um Failure to abide, you 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 can't be put in jail in the United States for being in debt, but you can be put in jail for failing to comply with a court order. Yeah. You have a court order for child support. You are not in compliance. You've admitted that. You have failed to live up to the promises you made at the last hearing to purge yourself of that contempt. So now she feels her only remedy is to ask that you be placed in jail. The court is very hesitant to do that, but the court has done it in the past. Uh, but an attorney would get, give you a chance to be represented, to advocate and argue why you should not be placed in jail for failing to abide by the court order. Here's the practical effect of it. You have to pay for the lawyer. The, le the, the county, unfortunately, and this is the bizarre thing in Kansas, uh, the taxpayers have to pay for your lawyer and they deserve to be reimbursed because this isn't their problem. Well, directly their problem. However, it's the only uh, avenue we have. So I will order you to pay those legal fees. So not only are you still going to owe all the back child support, you're going to owe the child support that's due and coming payable in the future, but now we're going to add an attorney fee to it. Uh, and you need to understand that that, I'm not saying that's what I'll do, put you in jail, but that's the remedy that Ms. Harper is going to seek. Okay. okay? I understand. You do. Okay. So, um, Unless you can come up with something right now that says, oh, judge, now I'm taking this serious and I'm going to make a large payment and continue to make payments. I'm I'm going to when we conclude this hearing, going to reach out and try to find a lawyer to represent you and appoint an attorney at your expense. OK. Um, so, sorry. So, you know, sorry, I, I, I'm sure you're sincere, but sorry just doesn't cut it right now. Oh, no, I, I meant I. Thought I was interrupting you. Oh, oh, no, no, that's all right. Uh, so what do you want to do? Uh, I want to pay and I want to get caught up and everything. It's I I can make every excuse in the world, but there's been a lot of things going on, especially the past two months. And I know I haven't been good about it, but the past two months have been just really bad. My dad had a massive heart attack. <sighs> about two months ago and he died about a week and a half ago and I've been trying to take care of family matters and my mom and my dad's business and he did not have health insurance or life insurance so I'm trying to figure out all that and I haven't had I haven't been able to work 
because I've been in Kansas City, I've been in Hayes, I just haven't had an opportunity to breathe. That doesn't give an excuse for all the other times. I understand that, but I, I'm not willingly trying not to pay it. I hope you understand that there's just certain things that's happened. And I can tell you, uh, I was engaged to a, a woman. I was with her for about four years and she had three kids. And then we had one of our own and her ex-husband never paid child support. And this is not, well, it's not an excuse for me, but they live with me and I had all their expenses to deal with too. And like I said, I know that's not an excuse for me, but that was just what I was dealing with. And that's not an issue anymore because they're no longer here or living with me. So I don't have to pay for any of their stuff or feel obliged to pay for any of their stuff. I just, I guess... I'm just going to ask if you could just give me a chance to prove that I can pay it a, a month or whatever you deem fit. And just, I mean, if we can do that and I can prove to you that I'm going to pay it and I'm going to be sincere about it. I just want a chance. And I know I've give, gotten a lot of chances, but I'm just asking for one more, please. Well, Mr. Thayer, um, uh, life is full of those kinds of events and circumstances, all right? The fact, you know, I'm going to be, it's going to sound sarcastic, but here's here's the reality. You were supporting some other person's children while your yeah. two children went without support. That is not something that the court's going to condone. I think by my yeah. looking at this, you've got roughly, your children are 15 and 12, somewhere in that range. Yeah. And... Um, you know, they haven't had any support for a long period of time. So uh, now I hope to, I hope to, I, I hope to win the lottery tonight, but I don't really have a realistic expectation that that's going to happen. And I sure I'm not going to plan my finances over around that. So give me a plan. Give me something concrete. You, you, you promised to pay, I think $200 a month. Was that right, Miss Harper? 200 every, 200 every two weeks, I believe. But since it got modified, I I was supposed to pay four fifty a month and I think a hundred and fifty and back for the back child support. Well back in uh, in March, on March eighth he was ordered to pay a hundred dollars a week. Is that right, Miss Harper? Believe so, Your Honor. Give me one second. And then let me look and see if that was modified. It and there was an order modifying child support and four fifty a month. He was ordered to pay at that time, and that was in July. Uh, and would that have been just for current and nothing towards arrears? That is just his current payment. Yes. Okay. Um. And that was based upon Mr. Thayer making roughly, I'm not even sure if that's close, somewhere around minimum wage, uh, not very much money, 26000 a year. Um, so, and then we continued the hearing back in, uh, I signed the order in August, but we continued about a month ago to give him a chance to purge himself and he's not making the payment. So, Mr. Thayer, I hope to do this. I hope to prove it. I got to have something more than hope. What, what, what is your, what, what, what do you usually work in? What's your employment generally? Well, I, are you asking? I, I'm self employed, which I worked for part time for my dad and, since he's gone, construction work, painting, okay. that, that kind of stuff. But, uh, I mean, I got back to work last week. and Who are you, you know, working for? I'm working for myself. Okay. It's my understanding that the construction industry, they're, they're looking for skilled labor and they're paying substantial. 
I, I understand. Successful ind independently. Why don't you go get a job? Well, I understand that, but my mom is relying on me because she is running the construction company now, and I have to be the one that holds it because she has no other avenue. Okay. And how is your mom going to do that if you're sitting in jail? That's why I'm asking for a chance, sir. That's not a chance, Mr. Taylor. I understand it, but that is not a plan. I got to have you. You can't just say I'm going to pay this and not pay it, and then come back and say, "Oh, gee, I had these circumstances. Please give me another chance." You got to give us, Miss Harper, particularly in the court, something more concrete to rely on because you've been making promises now for. I mean, since March, and you haven't fulfilled them. You haven't made a I, payment since April. That's I understand, but by August. Well, how am I supposed to? What What am I supposed to do to give you concrete evidence? I mean, I don't. What What do you want me to do? Well, uh, I want you to give me something that I can. If you went to a bank, you think they'd say, "Okay, here, let me give you some money on on a on a promise of hope." Okay, so what am I supposed to payments do? Payments coming in. What's your budget? What's your I mean, you got to show us something. I mean, that's what you would do if you went to a bank. You would sit down and you would show them, here's here's current con uh, contracts I've got. Here's the payment schedule. Here's my expenses. Here's my net. Here's what I can apply. That's what you do in business. That's what we're talking okay. about. Well, if you want to know about my business, I can tell you about my business. Is, is that what you want me? Or? I want, and, and out of that, we'd have to determine what you can pay and when you can pay it. Not, I hope to get this taken care of. You see the difference? Not entirely. I, well, I mean, maybe that's why you shouldn't be self-employed, because that's what I'm getting at. You, you have to understand, Mr. I'm not here to argue with him. I'm saying this is a business thing. You have got to perform. If you fail to perform, you owe a debt. A debt, yeah. the only debt you owe that could put you in jail. You have to come forward with a concrete plan with documentation to back it up so that me acting as a banker or loan officer could sit down and say, yes, this is a secure, this is a secure payment plan for a loan and obligation that the person has. Okay. That's the so, way the world works. Okay. So can I give you a budget plan or uh, a business plan and submit well, it into you? Um, I'm going to ask. I mean, Ms. obviously, don't have I'm it. Gonna, moment, I'm going to ask Miss Harper, um, based on our conversation, whether she still wants to appoint a lawyer or if she wants to give you the opportunity to come in with a concrete plan that you're going to present to her to satisfy her that you're going to make payments in the future, not only to satisfy your current support obligation, which is most important, but also to start paying towards the arrearage, Miss Harper. Because otherwise, we're just going to have a hearing 30 days from now. You're going to say, gee, Judge, I hope to get this done. Gee, Judge. I, and and she's going to say, put him in jail. So I put you in jail. I mean, you're not making payments anyway, so <clears throat> we don't lose anything, um, quite frankly. So, uh, And you can say, well, yeah, but then I can't work. But what difference does it make to us? You're not making payments anyway. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't. I, 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 what am I supposed to say? I can't argue with you. I know because I'm 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 the judge, but also because you know, know I'm right. I mean, you know that that's what you got to do. So, Miss Harper, what do you want to do? Do you want to give it thirty days for him to provide to you a concrete, reliable plan to make these payments, or do you want to just schedule thirty days out, run up an attorney fee, and ask to put him in jail? You tell me. You have every right to do that. I'm I'm I just don't know. I, I'm this is you know from doing this. You do this full time. This is always the court's dilemma. Put him in jail, but in jail, all he costs the taxpayers 35 to 50 bucks a day to feed him and keep him over there. Um, and we, and you know, and yes, it it puts a scare in him, but we don't get any money out of it. Your Honor, I've spoken with Mr. Thayer multiple, multiple, multiple times. And the basic conversation he had today is a conversation we basically have every time where I warn him not paying could result in going to jail. He makes promises to pay. He says, I have things lined up so that I can pay. And then when we come back, it's, well, there are circumstances that changed. When asked about employment, he stated, well, he has to be self-employed because you know he has to support or help his mother. 
but that means that he's not helping and supporting his children who he has an actual obligation to support correct this has been going on so long i think we do need to go ahead and have an attorney appointed because i do fear that we'll come back in 30 days and it'll be the same song and dance well i agree with you but what i'm going to do is this mr thayer i couldn't be any more clear on what you need to do you call Miss Miss Harper and you say, boy, I sure hope to get it done in this next month. But boy, I've had some other circumstances. I had a bill come in or I had this or I had that. Everybody's got it. OK, I got to plan a budget with my wife. I got five kids. OK, uh, and I'm still supporting some of them, even though they're adults, because they're still in school. And I have to set a budget out and I have to make my payments. OK, I got loans. I got a service every month. All right. So you're going to do what? A majority of the people in this country do and that is you are going to put together a concrete plan and you are going to present it to miss harper and say sandy go ahead and find us a new court date about 30 days out and you're gonna and miss harper i'm going to ask if after he furnishes it to you and you ask him questions that you forward to me what the plan is and we're going to sit down 30 days from now mr thayer and i'm going to tell you as your banker whether it's satisfactory or I'm going to call the note due. You understand? Then you're not going to be able to support your mom. You're not going to be able to support your kids. And you're going to meet a whole bunch of people over in the jail you're not going to like to associate with. But that's eventually what the result's going to be. But I'll appoint you a lawyer 30 days from now. We're just kicking the can down the road. Then you're going to have a legal bill. You're going to have to add to that uh, list of obligations. And we're going to have a final hearing. So we're going to stretch it out. We're going to buy you a little time. You better make productive right. use of it. So 30 days, within the next 30 days, before the next hearing, you must provide a concrete plan. And this is going to include, these are the jobs I currently have. This is the payment schedule on these jobs. And I know if you're doing construction, you got to pay for materials. And you may even have to pay for some subcontracts. I don't know. You're going to set all that out for Ms. Harper so you can look at it and say, okay, he's got a payment due on such and such a date, and he's going to sign this much of the payment to his current child support, as well as potentially some of the back. I think the current's more important than the arrears. We can work on that over time. But if she comes to me and says what she said today, judge, it's just the same song and dance. I'll appoint a lawyer at the next hearing. We'll set another hearing 30 days out, and you can start planning to pack your toothbrush and, and items because you you know where you're going to be checking into. You understand? I, do. I, can't, be, I can't be any clearer. So we're going to let you buy some time. You can either make productive use of it or uh, know the consequences could be severe. So you've got to provide it to Ms. Harper to her satisfaction. She will send it to me. And I may disagree with her a little bit, but I want to, you know, or she may say, I think it's good. And I'm going to say, no, I don't think it's fine tuned enough. I want something concrete. And that means specific facts. I want to know who the contract is you're working for. I want to know what the payment is. I want to know when the payment is due. I want to know future contracts you have on the horizon. I want to know when those are going to pay out. I want to know what the net is to you. I want to, you know, and yes, and guess who's going to come first? Your child support. Then comes your mom. Okay. Understood? I understand. I okay. understand. All right. So we'll give you a little time, but now we're all have a clear understanding of where we're going. So okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Um, what about September 30th at nine, Jennifer? Uh, it's all that's only 20, 24 days. What's the next? What do we have? We have anything in October? Um, I, I could do the 16th like at, 9 30. Well, no, I can't. No, no, no. Let's not. Hold on. Hold on. What about the seventh? Like at 1 30. That's actually criminal motion day, but we could squeeze this in because there's something that's available. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. How would that work, Miss Harper? October 7th at 1 30? Uh-huh. Yes, I'm available. Okay, Perfect. let's do that. Mr. Thayer, you've now got 31 days to put this to, uh, in fact, don't present it that day to Ms. Harper. So I'm going to order no. you to have a concrete plan to her. Let's talk about that, Ms. Harper. I want to set up some, I ask you to put this in a journal entry. Um, 
what do you need two weeks to um to review this and maybe contact mr thayer about any questions you have would that be sufficient yes or, Ron, should be. okay you're going to have your plan to her by the 23rd of september okay that's a that's now, a month am i supposed to come in and do it personally or over email or how whatever ms. Har whatever miss harper says it would be best to do that during email your honor okay not in the actual office all that often right you're going to email her you got an I, I want to know you're gonna to have to list like these are these are my average monthly expenses that are dedicated that are, you know you also have to be able to pay your you, your lights and your uh and, and a grocery bill i understand that because you got to eat to continue to work reasonable expenses are fine but you got to set it all out and there's an affidavit that we use it's called domestic relations affidavit um well probably want to get one that's the full full one so you could I want to look at if you're going to claim all these expenses, I want to know what they are. Yeah. You know, uh, in other words, and I, I throw this out. In other words, if your expenses are I need to buy cigarettes and and snowballs at serves, no, 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 no. Okay. That um this, you know, if I gotta buy bread and, and water and milk, then that's fine. But uh you gotta set that out. Miss Harper, can you have an email address, uh, Mr. Thayer? Yeah, yes, uh, she got emailed before. Okay, so yeah. email before. So you're going to email stuff to her, and you're going to have a concrete plan to her with documentation to back it up, just like you're dealing with a banker by the 23rd of September. That way, she can get in touch with you with any questions, and we will all meet again on October 7th at 1:30. All right, and that's the drop dead date. Yep. Very good, Miss Harper. If you'll. Uh, prepare a short journal entry from today and I will wish you good luck with Mr. Thayer. Mr. Thayer, I'm going to wish you good luck too. I want this thing to work out. I really do. I'm not in here to start nitpicking and finding a way to put you in jail. I want you out working, making money and making payments, but I, I can't rely. I'm not going to hold off doing uh, the sanctions on a promise of hope. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Very good. All right. Ms. Harper, anything else for today? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Thayer? Good luck, yep. uh, Harper, good luck, and I'll see everybody on October 7th. All right, I see uh, Victoria Dort is here. Can you hear me, ma'am? I know you're muted right now, but... Yes, I can. Okay. Oops, I can All right, and Mr. Roll, Christopher Roll, can you hear me, sir? You're muted as well, but I just want to make sure you can hear. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. I can I hear you now. Voice. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Mr. Johnson, obviously you're here from DHHS. Um, and I'm not saying he needs to be here. Is Mr. Sommerfeld here? No, he's not here today. Okay. And that's fine. We can go ahead with this. Um, could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. All right. Um, what I'm going to indicate to Ms. Dort and Mr. Roll, I'm going to have Mr. Johnson just start with a little bit before he goes into the bulk of things. Um, I'll have some questions for you. But Mr. Johnson, you uh, work for Department of Health and Human Services here in Otsego County, is that correct? That's correct. And you, your agency filed a petition with this court um, concerning Genevieve? Correct. Genevieve Amelia Roll, all right. And how old is Genevieve? Yeah. Uh, she is two years old. All right. Um, there's other children as well. Well, let me ask you this. What are you seeking at this point? I'll, we'll go through the petition in a minute, but what are you ultimately asking? We're all, we are we are requesting that we remove Genevieve Roll from the care of Victoria Dor and Christopher Roll. Okay, are, and I note in the petition there are other children. Are they in that household as well? They are not. They are with their biological fathers. They have full custody through front of the court. All right, and Ms. Dort and Mr. Roll are the mother and father 
Oh, uh, Genevieve? Gwyneth, yep. Okay, all right. All right, um, so I'm going to have these questions for you, um, Ms. Dort and Mr. Roll, but, and this is what's called an inquiry hearing. This is a child protective proceedings. It is not a criminal procedure. You do have certain rights I'm going to go through. You both have the same rights. You have the right to an attorney. One will be appointed for you. It will be a separate attorney, one for Ms. Dort, one for Mr. Roll. Um, there will also be an attorney appointed to represent Genevieve um, in this matter. This is simply an inquiry hearing, and uh, Mr. Johnson is asking for a removal portion of it. And we won't go too far in this hearing because there isn't an attorney here to represent you, but I do have to address the removal portion first. Um, so, Ms. Dort, have you received a copy of the petition that Department of Health and Human Services has filed? Yes. All right. Have you read it? Yes. If you wanted me to, I would read it to you now. If you say, no, I've read it and I've understand it, that's fine. I believe I understand okay. the majority. Right. And if you'll I do have be... questions, I can reach out and ask. And your attorney, and your, you know, basically the reason I'd be reading it is to make sure you understand it, not necessarily whether you agree with it or not. That's not what this hearing is about, but just that you understand it. Some questions you'll have I couldn't answer because I can't give legal advice, but you'd be able to talk to your attorney on. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Roll, um, you would agree you are the father of Genevieve? Yes. All right. Um, do you have a copy of the petition? I do. Have you read it? I have. And you want me to read it to you or not? No, no, I understand. Okay. All right. And once again, you can discuss if you have specific questions, you can discuss those with your attorney. We'll be telling you when the next hearing date on this is at near the end of the hearing. But Mr. Johnson, could you indicate to the court why you are seeking removal and what um, efforts have been made by um, the agency or otherwise to prevent the removal of Genevieve? Yep. So the department filed a petition for removal, removing Genevieve from Victoria and Christopher yesterday um, due to reoccurring alcohol use and domestic violence. Um, so we first got involved with Victoria and Chris in December of 2023. Um, that was the first complaint regarding the alcohol use and domestic violence in front of the children. Um, that was opened as a CPS ongoing case. Um, ongoing services were provided. Um, and then in, I believe it was April of 2024, we received another complaint, another CPS investigation regarding Victoria and Christopher regarding the same alcohol use and domestic violence. Um, in that case, Christopher was arrested for domestic violence. Um, we had an ongoing case. I believe we closed early August. I think it was August 15th. Um, and then as of yesterday, we received a new CPS complaint regarding alcohol use and domestic violence in front of the children between Victoria and Christopher. Um, so yesterday we filed a petition removing um, Genevieve from the care of Victoria and Christopher um, due to the domestic violence and then um, their substance use with alcohol use. All right, and where is Genevieve now? Uh, she's placed at a local foster home. Okay, all right. And, you know, beyond the ongoing investigation of the police involvement uh, that there's been in this, have there been any other services that have been provided to either or both parents? Yes. Um, Victoria participated in an inpatient rehab facility. I think it's New Hope. Um, she also worked with Catholic Human Services for outpatient substance use. Um, she attended AA services. Um, she worked with the Women's Resource Center. Um, and Christopher worked with Second Chance um, individual and group sessions for counseling. All right. Um, I'm not familiar with Second Chance. Is that an alcohol or substance abuse rehabilitation place? Uh, I believe it, it, it covers group sessions and individual counseling. I think it covers a little bit of everything. Okay, but it does deal with substance abuse and alcohol, at least as yep. part of it. Is that 
Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, Ms. Dort and Mr. Roll, this is what's called a removal hearing. It is not the inquiry hearing, or it's a it's a part of the inquiry hearing, but it, I can't complete the inquiry hearing until your attorney is here. I have hearings on these things fairly quickly. I'm going to ask Ms. Huff, who's the juvenile registrar, can we have a hearing on this Tuesday? All right. Okay. There will be a hearing scheduled on this on September 17th. We will talk about parenting time between Genevieve and you in a minute. Um, and I'll hear what Mr. Johnson is proposing, but I've been asked uh, for the removal and I'm not here to say whether or not the alcohol use and domestic violence occurred or didn't occur. That's not the time for this. Um, but as to the removal, Ms. Dort, is there anything you wanted to say at this point? Um, no, I agree. I do agree with the removal and I appreciate CPS because right. they're there for a reason. <laughs> you know for sure so okay all right that's fine and i don't want you to go into the details but the fact that you agree uh, you know, I, I appreciate hearing that mr roll do you have any statements you wanted to make at this point no i understand why i agree with it but i understand why okay all right uh, the the court does find it would be contrary to Genevieve's welfare to remain in the home and will order um, the removal. I do find that is outlined by Mr. Johnson as to both parents there have been reasonable efforts to prevent the removal, including ongoing um, CPS cases, uh, law enforcement involvement, Catholic Human Services, um, inpatient treatment, AA, Women's Resource Center, and uh, Second Chance, another rehabilitation place. Um, so the court will order that. Mr. Johnson, um, as to parenting time between now and the 17th, uh, which we're looking at about two and a half weeks, I can address parenting time again on the 17th if necessary. But what is your proposal between now and then? So I will be in touch with both Victoria and Christopher. Uh, we'll schedule parenting time within the next seven days. All right. Um, do you believe, Mr. Johnson, do you believe that they could have that parenting time together or should it be one for Ms. Dort and another? For it, will, it would have to be separate due to the, the domestic violence. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to order that, um, that that take place. I will review it again on the 17th and you can talk to Mr. Johnson between now and then. You could also talk to your attorneys. Usually we're able to come up with an agreement, but if not, you know, I can make a decision. If um, you think it should be more, they should think it should be less. Uh, but so you understand, though, that it would be separate, Ms. Dort. Your time would be your time with Genevieve. Mr. Roll, your time would be your time um, yes. with Genevieve. Okay. I have their attorneys to sign if they want their information. Okay. Um, we know who your attorneys will be. And if you have that, uh, they're not going to know anything about the case because they would not have received it yet. But we'll give you their name and telephone number if you each have a pen and paper ready. And remember, it'll be separate numbers or separate attorneys. Yes. So go ahead. Uh, Christopher's is going to be Larry Brown. All right. Mr. Roll, yours is Larry Brown. And his telephone number is 517-398-3188. 3188. 3188 are the last four digits. Thank you. All right. And David Delaney would be your attorney, Ms. Dort. And actually, I don't have 989 731 1508. All right. Thank you. All right. So if you both have those, once again, they're not going to know anything about the case yet at this point, but we'll be sending out paperwork and you can still call them um, and leave a message and we'll see where we are. Um, I want to once again stress that this is not a criminal case. It is a child protective proceedings. Uh, also that the HHS is not seeking termination of parental rights. They're seeking reunification. Are the two of you still acting as a couple or not? 
and it doesn't matter to me. I'm just we have here. Been. Um, we have been. And if you're not, if you're not sure, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Let me do. We can talk about that later. But it, that would really have to deal with reunification if we're at that point. So, but the okay. whole idea is, if there is a problem, to get assistance in resolving the problem. Once again, it's a child protective proceeding. It's not okay. a criminal case. Okay. All right. And I've discussed your rights with you. You do have an additional right that attaches with the removal order that I am signing today. You have the right to appeal um, this, even this order today. And if you wish to appeal it, you could. Um, the if you could contact the probate or the juvenile registrar would get you the information on that. If you could not afford an attorney for the appeal, one would be appointed for you. If you could not afford transcripts or other documents, copies of those would be provided to you free of charge. I'm just advising you of that. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do that. You can also discuss that with your attorneys if you wanted to. Ms. Dort, do you have any questions? I do not. Mr. Roll, do you have any questions? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, my hear. only question is, is, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. The only issue, uh, I believe Larry Brown represented Victoria in the first domestic violence. I don't know if that'll make a difference here. Was, were you charged with domestic violence, Ms. Dort? No. She was not. You, were you charged with domestic violence, Mr. Roll? Yes, I Okay. And was Mr. Was Mr. Brown your attorney? No, it was Gary Gilo. I I, I thought Victoria had told me that Larry well, Brown. She would not have him. had. She would not have had an attorney in that. Has Mr. Brown, to your knowledge, Ms. Dort, ever represented you on anything? Um, when I had an OWI last June, or two Junes okay. ago. Well, just to be on the safe side, I don't anticipate any problem, but I'm just going to right. change the two attorneys because they don't have any knowledge of this case whatsoever. Mr. Delaney will represent um, you, Ms. Dort, and Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. Okay, would represent Mr. Delaney will represent Christopher Roll. Yeah, okay. Larry Brown will yours will be um, Mr. Roll, yours will be Mr. Delaney. Um, Ms. Dort, yours will be Mr. Brown. You guys probably need those numbers again. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Yes, and please. so, ma'am, Larry Brown's number is 517-398-3188. All right. Thank you. And if you could give Mr. Roll, Mr. Delaney's number. Okay. Mr. Roll, Mr. De David Delaney's number is 989-731. 1508. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anything else? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see folks on the 17th. Thank you. Um, do you have, hold on one more second. Do we have, do you have addresses for them? Um, no, for her I do, for him I do. Okay, um, sir, what is your address that we should use for mailing purposes? Mm -hmm. Welcome back. All right. Okay, um, there we go. All right, we are here in the matter of Scroggins versus Pearl, case number 17-011110DS. Uh, I have Ms. Scroggins available. Mr. Pearl did not show up. This matter was set for a hearing at 9.30. It's now 9.48. Um, Ma'am, I've read your motion. Yes, it's kind of, all, kind of all over the place. you got a lot of concerns, and yes, you've, atta you've attached some pictures that validate those concerns, but I have no idea what you're asking for. <laughs> Um, so I was told I know no one to really make no one do anything, but I, I need a lot. I need help um, with Mr. Pearl. I, I just would like for him to be able to do 50 percent of his parenting. Um, like I'm, I'm there for my son all the time, but it's so, so hard. I got a special needs son. He requires a right. lot of attention and everything. And 
I can't have Mr. Pearl um, jumping in and out. It's either he comes 50-50 with me and or just leave us alone because every time I allow him to jump in and out, it's, it's a setback to my kid and it's a setback right. for me. It's like a dictation thing that he's trying to do. Uh, and well, at, at, at this point in time, you have total control of parenting time. You can not let him have it or you can let him have it. It's by your discretion. He has zero parenting time, according to the court orders. Yes, sir, he does. That, 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 that had been entered since 2017. Mm -hmm. So for seven years, he's had zero. All parenting time is at your discretion. So if you don't feel mm -hmm. it's in the best interest of your child, you can just not do it. But I see, I, I don't want, because uh, my son is like, uh, but mom, he's my dad. Okay. And I love oh, him, but okay. not the kid. Do you want me to send this to the front of the court for a parenting time? Yes, sir. Okay. That I can do. I yes. can't make him a good father, though. No, that's the only unfortunate part about it. Um, so, but, so, like, does the front of the court get it? Does that mean he will have to stand up to it, or is it just like, it's just I something can't that was I can't, in? that's, I can't make him do it. Right. That's why he said that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is why I leave, you know, right now it's at your discretion. If I send it to the front of the court, there is going to be court ordered time. If he doesn't use it, then I will take it away and we'll be back, back to at your discretion. Well, um, okay. Right now you have so control. Is there, is there any way that I can, um, if I can get it to where he could just leave us alone? Is, Again, it, is there any way I can? It, it's at your discretion, which means if you tell him, no, I'm not giving you any, then it's going to force him to file a, a motion to see if he wants parenting time. Okay. And he's going to have to show the court why that's imperative. And he's going to have to tell, and I'll be able to tell him, look, dude, you asked for parenting time. I will grant it specifically, but you better utilize it and be a parent mm -hmm. on that time. Yes, sir. I don't think he's going to do it because that's why he stated, uh, the courts and people can't make him do this, can't make no. him do that. But, but you can also yeah. tell him then there's no parenting time. Okay. So this is my, my problem. Now, if I don't do this part, I can be like, okay, I got All four right. you, what, what, do, Yeah. Do you want me to suspend it until further order? Yeah. But if you, you, you put it, enough, you put some things in here that were very concerning about his treatment of the child. So yes, I can't, yes. with what your allegations are in your petition, I can suspend his parenting time. I don't like to do that because, again, you have total control. It's right. reasonable as you agree. So in other words, if yes. I suspend it, then you don't have a choice to say your kid wants to see his dad. So, you know, you don't have the choice to say, I'll, I'll you know, it's Christmas gone over because I'm suspending it. Right now you have that ability. You can tell him no. You can tell him yes. You have control okay. of this, not him. All right. But but that's the thing. Like, I want him to be able to take 50-50, uh, but see, uh, if he's not going to do it, then it's just a waste of my time, too. But I would well, like for him not to be able to. And, and obviously, 50-50 is too much for him to handle because mm -hmm. he doesn't want to. And when he right, does, right, right. there is some concerning activity that he engaged in that may be detrimental to the child. Right. So I really just wanted to just leave us alone. Like, I don't want him to be able to call me. Anytime on okay. the night and say, Again, I you, want to you've, talk to you, you, you've, you've put enough in here and said that I can suspend his parenting time if that is your request. You just yes, made sir. no, re you, you just made no request. You gave me all this stuff and you didn't tell me what you really wanted. <laughs> Possibly from <laughs> talking to you because you don't really know what you want. Right, right, right. I'm just trying to get into where if he can't. I, I, I'd ability. like him to have parenting time, but I, I also want the child to be safe. And it doesn't look like he's been safe with his father. He's been yes. injured. Yes, sir. All right. I can suspend it and we'll see what happens. All right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you and have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Take care. Okay. We're hearing cause number DF2404265, Grissom and Fletcher. With the parties in the Grissom and Fletcher matter, please unmute yourselves, turn your cameras on, and raise your right hands. Do each of you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Ms. Fletcher? Uh, yes, I do. Mr. Grissom? Yes. All right, you may both lower your hands and Miss Peoples, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. We're on an order and suit affecting the parent child relationship. 
Judge, parties agree to all issues except for the visitation schedule. If I could read the terms of the agreed order and then, then take testimony, Judge. You may. Thank you, Judge. It's one child before the court. Elijah Grissom, I'd offer the acknowledgement of paternity as States Exhibit A. States Exhibit A is admitted. Thank you, Judge. Parties are in agreement to be appointed as joint managing conservators of the child with the mother having the right to maintain the residence in Dallas or any surrounding counties. Parties are in agreement as far as the child support and medical support that health insurance would be provided by the father, Mr. Grissom, through his employment. Parties agree that dental insurance would also be provided by the father through his employment. Parties are in agreement to child support of $731 a month beginning October 1st, 2024. Parties are in agreement to a retroactive child support judgment from December 15th, 2023 until today, September 5th, 2024, in the amount of $6,914. Mr. Grissom is to pay that at $100 a month beginning October 1st, 2024. Court costs would be as billed to Mr. Grissom. There is a request for a non-disclosure for the mother, Ms. Fletcher, and that is the extent of the order, Judge. You may call um, your oh, person. And I'm sorry, parties do agree to meet at the Woody Smokehouse um, at 1021 Center in Centerville, Texas, for the exchanges. Okay. And that's the extent of the order. Okay. You may call if your I, first witness. Thank you, Judge. I'll call the mother, Miss Fletcher. Can you state your full name? Baron Fletcher. And Ms. Fletcher, did you hear all the terms of the order that were stated to the court? Yes. And did you understand all of those terms that were stated? Yes. Are you in agreement with the stated terms and believe they're in the best interest of your child? Yes. Right. As far as um, the visitation schedule for Elijah, you're wanting some form of um, supervised visits in the beginning. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And so you're wanting that Mr. Grissom would have three months of supervised visits? That's correct. Okay. Why are you asking for the visits to be supervised? Well, one, because Elijah is unfamiliar with um, Michael. So I would be concerned about um, the Elijah being okay during those times. And it is a considerable way from home. So I want to have direct access to Elijah. Okay, how old is your son? He's nine months this week. Okay. okay. And Miss, you said Mr. Grissom, he, where does Mr. Grissom live? I'll let him answer. Well, no, I'm asking you, hold on, Miss Fletcher. So he doesn't live near you? You said it's a considerable way away from you? Yes. So we're meeting halfway between Dallas and Houston. Okay, so Mr. Grissom lives in Houston, to your knowledge? Yes. Okay. And so you're wanting, who do you want to supervise these visits for the first three months? I would be there. Okay. And you're wanting to visit, the visits would occur at Mr. Grissom's home in Houston or at your home? The visits are at the Centerville, that's Woody Smokehouse. Okay. So the visits would be at this restaurant in Centerville? Yes. Okay. And then after the three months of supervised visits, you're requesting 15 months of unsupervised visits? Right, but in the same area, in Centerville. So these would not be overnight visits yet? Correct. That's correct. Okay. And then after that, you're okay with a standard visitation schedule until your child is three years old? That's correct. Or no, no. When he is three years old, he can start standard visitation. That's okay. going to be, yeah. Okay, which would be once a month and you're requesting the first Saturday of the month for his standard visits. That's correct. Okay. Is there any other reasons that you want the court to know as far as the request for the the modified visitation schedule? 
No, that's all. Okay. And then as far as your address being in the court order today, you have safety concerns with it being listed in the order? I do. Has there been family violence in the past two years between you and Mr. Grissom? No. Do you have another case in our office where safety would be at issue? No, I. but I am concerned because he has in the past shown up without notice with the police officer trying to demand to enter into my home. And I do not want that to be available to him, my address to be available to him for that reason. Okay. Does he currently know where you live? No. All right. I'll pass the witness, Judge. You may call your next witness. I'll call the father. Mr. Grissom, can you state your full name? Michael Grissom. And did you hear all the terms of the order that were stated to the court? Yes. Did you understand all of those terms? Yes. And are you in agreement with the stated terms and believe they're in the best interest of your child? Yes. And as far as the, the visitation schedule, you do agree to the first three months being supervised at that Woody Smokehouse in Centerville? Correct. Okay, but you don't agree after that with having to do 15 months unsupervised at that same location, right? Correct. Okay, and you're wanting to just do three months supervised and then go to standard visits? Correct. Okay, can you tell the court why? Um, I feel like, one, um, it's been enough time that I haven't seen him already. Um, I think um, that the first three months of the visit should be uh, more than enough time for me to get adjusted with him um, and then to be able to build that relationship that I want to have with my son. Okay. And you're agreeable to continue to meet at least for the first three months at that Woody Smokehouse in Centerville for the visits? Um, yes, I am willing to meet at the Centerville to pick up even if uh, we go to the standard or not. Oh, okay. Okay. And then as far as the non-disclosure, um, are you in agreement with Ms. Fletcher's request to not have her address listed in the court order? Um, that really doesn't concern me as much. Okay. I'll pass the witness judge. Ms. Fletcher, why was he trying to enter your house with the police? He was trying to assert that there was things he left in my apartment and it was just, I was never contacted. If I was contacted about that matter, I would have been willing to give him those things. But at the time, I was still caring for my son. So it was an ambush. And it would have been nice to have been approached amicably about that concern. Okay. okay. Um, so I will accept the agreement of the party so far as there is an agreement. I will... Uh, order of visitation supervised for the first three months. I will order three more months of uh, unsupervised visitation. I'm not sure where that would take place. How many hours is the visitation for the three months, Miss Peoples? So just part, well, they didn't have, they just said that it would occur supervised. But they didn't have any time. They didn't specify time for it. Okay. Well, we agreed for the on next... the time. Excuse me? We, we agreed on the time. But y'all just didn't put it in the order? Correct. I think I... she may have changed it. There was some edits being made, but we originally agreed from 12 to 5 p.m. Okay. So 12 to 5 p.m. is good, supervised. Is there someone else who can supervise other than you, Miss Fletcher? I'm not sure. Does the court appoint anybody to supervise visits? No, ma'am. So who else would be available? Meaning like... I don't know. Maybe if there's someone in your family that he knows and he gets along with, somebody in his family that you both know and feel comfortable with. I personally don't know anybody who would be available for those times. If, if, if it has to be supervised by somebody else, it would have to be a different time period. Okay. So less hours on that day. We'll say supervised by Ms. Fletcher or any adult that the parties agreed to then for three more months it can be at woody's from 12 to 5 with no um need for supervision and then after that it'll go to standard 
Okay. I have a question about the standard. Would it, would it still be in Centerville? No, the standard will be at his place of residence or any place that he chooses. He gets visitation one week in a month. And it could be in Dallas. It could be in Houston. It could be in Centerville that it, you know, if y'all meet in Centerville and he wants to stay in Centerville with the child, that's fine. But it'll be at a place of his choosing. So my question would be, would, would I be notified of his whereabouts with Elijah? Uh, that is the courteous thing to do. Yes. If, if you, you are entitled to have his address and his phone number so that you will know where your child is. Okay. Okay. And um, yeah. Okay. That's all. And Mr. Grissom. I mean, oh no. Also Ms. Fletcher, I'm not uh, authorizing a non-disclosure. Non-disclosure is denied. Is there anything else, Ms. Peoples? Nothing further, Judge. Any other questions of the parties? No, ma'am. Okay. So now that I've made my ruling, if you don't like it, if you don't agree with it, or you think it's not fair, you have three days to file an appeal, 30 days to file a motion for new trial. This case is out of the 256th District Court in Dallas County. That would be Judge Sandra Streeter. If you, um, she might have a different opinion from me. So now do you understand the, that also? I understand. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No, ma'am. All no. right. Then thank you both for appearing here today and you're both free to go. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Judge, Mr. Talley is ready to approach. What number, Mr. Statutory duties under federal and state law. So um, I don't know. You want me to just give me the give them the gist of it, Miss Lipford? Sure. Um, so we learned that the uh, that Mr. McKenzie, as the payer of support, is currently receiving SSI benefits, um, and that is not something that we can use to uh, as as income to calculate support, and it is also not something that we can use to garnish. Um, to pay child support arrearages. So our hands are kind of tied in terms of those two issues. And we're requesting at this time that the case be administratively closed and that support be set at zero until the time that Mr. McKenzie um, receives income in addition to the SSI income um, or any sort of assets with which he could pay support on his arrears. Yeah, basically, uh, according to the motion, there's about $1,000 in arrearages still left. What will happen is that's put it in an administrative account and we cannot collect on it as long as he is taking SSI. But if he ever wins the lottery, they automatically notify us and we grab it. I've, I okay. have had that. I I have had that happen. But Mr. McKenzie, you have to play the lottery to win the lottery. Just one of those things. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I made my I I, my wife and I were talking about retirement last week, and I made her play. So, uh, <laughs> nice. but in any event, any questions, uh, Miss Skydema? You're the plaintiff. Any questions, ma'am? Nope, I'm totally happy with it. No problem. And uh, Mr. McKenzie, any questions, sir? No, sir. I am happy as well. I'm glad. That's unusual. I don't get to make people happy. That's not my job. But thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, in any event, thank you. take care to both of you. Like I said, this is in compliance with federal and state law. We can't collect on SSI. So, all righty. Motion granted, Ms. Lipford. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a great thank afternoon, you. everybody. Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you raise your right hand, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm sick. So bear with me. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right. You may lower your hand, and Mr. Talley, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. We're hearing a super modification of support order. I first ask the court take judicial notice of the return of service on file for the non custodial parent which was filed on June 24th, 2024. So noted. 
Thank you, Judge. Because he has been served, his answer time has run and no answer has been filed. The state would like to proceed with the default. You may. I'll call the mother. Ma'am, would you please state your full name? And are you asking that the court order you to apply for or maintain the child on a government medical assistance program? Yes. And are you asking that Mr. Edwards be ordered to pay support based on information available to the state regarding his wages? Yes. Are you asking that he be ordered to pay cash medical support of $109 per month beginning October 1st? Yes. And are you asking that he be ordered to pay guideline child support in the amount of $351 per month beginning October 1st? Yes. Are you asking that the court order Mr. Edwards to pay the court costs for this proceeding? Yes. And in your previous order, there was a finding of non-disclosure as it pertains to your address and other identifying information, correct? Yes. And what was the reason that you requested that uh, non-disclosure um, finding? It's personal. Can you tell the court? Um, was it due to violence personal. on the part of Mr. Edwards? Yes, and other stuff. Okay. Um, what was the nature of the violence that occurred? It's personal. Ma'am, I can't determine if the family violence uh, should stay on and if you should be uh, granted a non-disclosure unless you can tell me, give me some evidence to what happened. Just saying it's personal is not enough. I mean, um, if, if everybody else is in here and they can hear my personal business. Do you want your address to be withheld from the order, ma'am? Yes. Okay, then you need to give the judge a reason why. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. It's a court full of people out here. I don't want people to know my personal if, business. If we were in the courthouse, it would be a court full of people also. <clears throat> and I will ask the step to the to the front to tell you to your to tell you so nobody else can hear my personal business. Okay, ma'am, I understand your that you don't want everybody to know your personal business. Um, was there physical violence between you and Mr. Edwards? It wasn't physical, but it's other stuff. I don't I don't know more word, more words to put it in. Was it uh emotional violence or uh some kind of trauma? I was heard? right. I was right, yes, I was right. Okay. Ma'am, that was physical violence. All you had to do was say it was physical violence. Okay, well it's physical violence. Okay. Okay, Mr. Talley. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Nothing further. All right, then I will grant the default order, order mom to maintain government health insurance, order cash medical support of $109 per month, order child support at $351 per month, order court cost says bill. All start dates will be October 1st, 2024. The non-disclosure will continue. Um, he doesn't have any relationship with the child at all? No, he's not. He don't need to be around my child. Excuse me, I can't hear you, ma'am. No, ma'am, he doesn't need to be around my child. Okay, I just was asking, if, if, did the uh, prior order uh, give him any rights? No? No, ma'am. Okay. I, All I right. can confirm, Judge, the um, prior order named the mother sole managing conservatorship and ordered no visitation. Okay, that's fine. Uh we were not trying to force you to say anything. I just needed something. So you could have told me it was physical violence. You could have told me some uh, criminal charges were um, were the result of it. And that would have been fine. I understand you're not wanting to um, talk about the incident. And I apologize for us not communicating that with you well. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you have any questions, ma'am? No, ma'am. All right. Then thank you for appearing here today and you're free to go. Okay.